Good everyone, my name is Graphics. In this video, we want to use the mesh analysis in order to solve for I1, I2, I3, and also we want to calculate the voltage drop in each of the resistor. We also want to calculate the power dissipated in each resistor. I also want to calculate the total power. Now, if you look at the circuit closely, you discover that this circuit has two mesh. We we'll call it mesh I1 and I2. It has two voltage source, right? We we'll call it in the name of 30 volts and 15 volts, as you can see. It has three resistors which has a resistance of 2 ohms, 3 ohms, and 4 ohms. Now, if you look at 30 volts, it has a higher value than, in the, in the left-hand side, it has a higher value than 15 volts in the right-hand side. And the 30 volts will provide a current of I1. And that I1 will move and get to a point, let's say that point is what? Point B, right? That is a node. Now, when it get there, what happened is splits into I2 and what? I3, right? Now, what I'll do here is, this is what we're having, I1, I2, and I3. So, that is my direction I'm taking, right? So, if my direction is correct, I'm going to be having positive value throughout. But if my direction is wrong, my current one or two of them will have a negative direction, right? So let's see how it goes. So I'm going to name this my mesh, or I'll say my loop. I'll call it A, this point A, this point B already there, this point C, point D, E, F, right? So we will want to, first of all, we will want to consider um, mesh A, B, E, F, A, right? So let me bring that out so you see what I'm talking about. So I'm bringing it out. Now when I bring it out, look at what we're having. The 15, the 30 volts, I brought it out. The 2 ohms and the 3 ohms with the I3, look at them placed here. So this way, you see that current moves from, I'll take my clockwise direction, right? So we're going in this manner. And we look that current moves from a lower potential to what? Higher potential. So if you move from negative to positive, that is from a lower potential to higher potential, our voltage there will be what? Positive. So we'll be having 30. Now, if you look at this again, my I1 is flowing through two ohms. That's the direction of my I1, right? And I'm also taking the same direction of the direction of the current, making my resist the current flowing through the resistance, the voltage should be what? Negative. Because when you multiply current and voltage, you will have the current and resistance we have in the negative voltage, right? But well, since they are going in the same direction, we'll be having a negative voltage. So we'll say what? I2, I1, right? So it's is 30 minus what? 2, I1. Similarly, minus 3, I3, because the current is flowing in the same direction as the direction I'm taking. I'm going in a clockwise manner, and the current also flowing in a clockwise manner, right? So equals to what? Zero. Since there's no any other resistors in the circuits here now if you look at this very well i have i3 here right i supposed to be having just two currents because i have two mesh it's supposed to be two current but now i'm having three current so i need to break down that the third current so that it will to fit into the um, um to the mesh i have here so that way i will now apply what is called what the kcl in order to get I3. So applying KCL to get I3, that is the current flowing through the 3 ohms resistor. I was going to say that. Now, this is how you do it here. The current coming in, look at the I1 here, right? It's coming in, it's going into B. You can see the way it is moving. It is moving into B. So I write it positive, right? Now, the one leaving, you see I2 is leaving. Since it is leaving B, right, I'll put minus I2. 
Now look at I3 also leaving. Since I3 is leaving B, I'll put minus I3. So equals to what? Zero. So what I need is to make I3 the solution of the formula. So I'll be having my I3 to be equals to, because my minus I3 moves to the other side, to become positive. So I'm going to see my I3 equals to what? I1 minus what? I2. So that's what I'm having. So anyway, I see I3. I'll just simply place my I1 minus what? Minus I2. Is that okay now? So we'll move forward. Now, if I now input this into the above equation here that I, ca I calculated for, I'll discover that the 30 minus 2i1 minus 3i3, tell me writing i3, I'll replace the i3 with what? i1 minus i2, then equals to what? 0, right? So I'll write this again and say that the 30 minus 2i1 minus 3 times i1 will give minus 3i1, minus 3 times plus um, i2, minus 3 minus i2 give you plus 3i2, right? Because minus times minus is plus. So what I just did there, I expanded so giving me that, so I'll put equals to what? Zero. Now what I have here, if I collect like terms, I'm going to say that 30 minus, if you look at minus 2i1 minus 3i1, minus minus, right? I'll be having minus 4 minus 5i1. When you add the negative value of 2 and negative value of 3, you'll be having negative value of what? 5i1 plus, now, the i2 there, which is 3. So plus 3i2 equals to what? 0, right? So if I take minus 5i1 plus 3i2 to the left-hand side, right? It's going to give me 30 is equals to 5i1 minus 3i2. That will give us what? My i1. Is that the key now? Now, we've got in i1. Now, the next thing we'll be trying to get here will be what? We, we want to get for i2. And the only way we can get for i2 is to consider mesh B, C, D, F, B. So this mesh, let me draw it out. So this is what I'm talking about. This is what we have here, right? So I've drawn it out. So we'll start. Now, I can start from point B, right? Because that's what we're talking about from point B. What you notice, the current is flowing in the direction of my direction because I am taking a clockwise direction. And we are all flowing. You can see the way we are moving this way. So we can see that they are going in the same direction with the current, right? So because of that, I will now put minus 4i2, right? So minus 4i2. So from where we have, from what we have here, what we are going to do here will now be, we we'll put it this way, or we we'll, we'll can start virtually with minus 4i2. So minus 4i2, we are moving from a lower potential to a higher potential, from a higher potential to a lower potential, that means from plus to what? Minus, because I'm moving in this direction, right? So that will give me what? Minus 15. Because what you notice, when you move from a higher potential to lower potential, voltage becomes what? Negative, right? Now, then plus 3i3. Why? Because we see that I'm moving in a clockwise direction while the i3 is coming down, so they are opposing each other. So we're having what? Plus 3i3 equals to what? 0. Now, what is i3? i3 is giving us, what I said earlier, is giving us what? i1 minus i2, right? So what I'm going to put here now is, I'm going to say my minus 4i2, right? Um, minus 4i2 plus 15. Minus 4i2 minus 15 plus 3i3. So what is i3? I3 is what? I1 minus I2. So we put in bracket I1 minus I2. So when you expand, you'll be having minus 4I2 minus 15 into bracket. 3 times I1 is 3I1. 3 times minus I2 give you minus 3I2. So this is what we'll be having here, right? So if I collect like terms, I'll be having 3I1 will be there. So we have, we also be having minus 3i2, minus 4i2, not giving me minus 7i2, minus what? We have 15. So what we are going to do here now is we will now solve the equation, that will be my equation 2, right? Now, what we are going to be doing here is that we will be combining equation 1 and 2, where we are going to be solving them 
simultaneously right so equation one is 5i1 minus 3i2 is equals to 30 that is my equation one and equation two is 3i1 minus 7i2 is equals to what 15 that is what my equation two so by elimination method we are going to be equating i1 and i1 here right by multiplying equation 1 by equation of i1 in equation 2 and multiplying equation 2 by equation of i1 in equation 1 so by doing that we'll be seeing that the 3 in equation 2 multiplied by what the 5 i1 in equation 1 and that will be giving us 15 i1 then multiplying by 3 we have 9 i2 so multiplying 30 by 3 we have what 90 so we are going to term that equation 3 so we we'll multiply this equation 2 by 5 so we are having 5 times 3 i1 that will be giving us uh, 15 i1 minus minus 5 times 7 will give us 35 i2 equals to what 75 that will be my equation 4 so now the aim is for we to equate the 15 that we can find both in equation 3 and equation 4 and both of them are positive so the only way we can equate them is to what introduce a negative sign now introducing a negative sign you discover that if you subtract 15 i1 from 15 i1 you will have what is called um, 0 now minus 9 i2 minus minus 35 i2 will give us what 90 minus what 75 is that taken so 90 minus 75 so when you do that you discover that minus 9 i2 minus times minus give us plus that 5 i2 give us what 26 i2 right that will give us 90 minus 75 will give us what 15 so if divide both sides by 26 you'll be having i2 to be equal to what 15 over 26 and that will be 0 0.577 ampere so that is my word for my i2 here right so the next thing you are going to input i2 into equation one above any of them where you put in equation one equation two you get the same answer so substituting i2 into equation one we are going to be having 5i1 minus 3i2 is equals to what 30. so in writing this again we'll be having are we having 5i1 minus 3 into bracket 0.577 that is the value for i2 which will give us 30. now this will now give us 5i1 minus 1.7307 equals to what 30 that will be the value of what that 3 times 0.577 so we we'll say my 5i1 is equals to 30 plus 1.7307 that is taking minus 1.7307 to the other side of the equal sign will become what positive so my 5i1 now if you divide both sides by 5 you will be having my 5i1 will now be equal to 31.7307 so dividing both sides by 5 we will be having um i1 to be equals to what 31.7307 divided by what by 5 and that will give us 6.346 6 ampere that is what we'll be having there. So that will be my I1. So if we got in I1, I'll got in I2, right? So we will now want to calculate for what? For I3. Now, if you look at the value of I3, is equal to what? I1 minus I2. Is that taken? So when you put those two values of I1 minus I2, my I3 will now be equal to 6.346 minus 0.577 i3 will now be 5.769 ampere so i'll write them up here for easy reference so we can easily use them to calculate for the um, voltage drop right so calculating for the voltage drop across each resistors now in doing that in resistor the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor right is uh, is given to be what i1 is that the key? if you look at um, the arrow here so my v2 ohm will now be equals to what um i1 times the resistor which is 2 and the value of i1 here is given to be what um that will be 6.346 ampere right 
So we're going to multiply it by what? By that 2. So when you multiply 6.346 ampere times 2, you'll be having um one now we're having 12.692 volts. Is that taking? So my V voltage drop across the 3 ohm resistor will now be equal to the current flowing through the 3 ohm resistor, which is I3 times what? Times the resistance the resistance of the resistor, which is 3 also. And when you put your value of I3, you draw that I3 is 5.769 multiplied by the 3 that will give us 17.31 volts. And similarly, the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor will now be giving us the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor, which is I2, multiplied by the value of the resistance of the resistor, which is what 4. Now, if you do that, the value of I2 is 0 0.577 multiplied by the 4, that will give us what? 2.308 volts, right? So these are the voltage drop across each of the resistors present in the circuit. Now we look for what? The power dissipated on each resistor. So we know our power is given as what? Um, I square R, right? So the power across the 2 ohm resistor will now be equal to the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor square times 2, which is 6.346 square times 2. And that will give us, um, when you multiply this, we are going to be having um, 80.543 watts, right? Now the same thing I'm going to do for the power dissipated on the 3 ohm resistor and that will give us the current flowing through the 3 ohm resistor which is given to be what i3 right so which gives us i3 square multiplied by the resistance of the resistor itself that is flowing through which is 3 and the value of my i3 square is given to be 5.769 multi square multiplied by 3 right so that will give us 99.844 watts so similarly, we look for the voltage drop across the, the power dissipated across the 4 ohm resistor and that will give us um, the current flow into the 4 ohm resistor which is giving us what? The I2 square, right? Multiplied by what? The value of the resistance, the value of the resistance of the resistor. So we're having 0 0.577 square times 4. And that will be giving us, if you press that, you calculate to have 1.332 watts, right? So this is what we have. So what we do is to calculate for the total power. So since we've calculated for each power that's placed in each resistor, now we want to calculate for the total power in the circuit here. So total power now will write us to be the P total. It will now be giving us the addition of the 80.543 watts plus the 99.844 watts plus the 1.332 watts and that will give us 181.719 watts right so this is what we're having so um if you have found this video helpful please don't forget to subscribe comment like and also share the video Thanks for watching.